Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel and my first YouTube video. Today I'd like to take a little bit of time to talk about using a BlackBerry Key 2 in 2025. So why am I using a BlackBerry Key 2 in 2025? I wanted a device that allows me to disconnect from all the apps I have on my main phone but still have a way to communicate with my wife uh, to be able to uh, check the internet, uh, search for something if I need to search for something, uh, but not have a million distractions or a million things that uh, are trying to get my attention. Uh, I, I have a couple apps set up to allow me to still stay in touch. Um, I use Google Chat mostly to communicate with people in my life uh, and that works on this device. I use um, Push Bullet to sync notifications from my main device so text messages will still show up on this discreet, uh, display and uh, allow me to see the contents of that uh, text message and even reply if I want to. Push Bullet doesn't support RCS messaging and probably never will. I don't know that it's going to see a lot of support going forward, but it does still allow for that notification mirroring and the ability to send an SMS message if I truly need to in a pinch. But yeah, getting into the device, I've set it up so it's very minimal. Uh, I have two here. This one in silver is the one that's active. This one I kind of just play around with a little bit more at home. Uh, I got these back in June of 2024. Um, I didn't need to buy two, but I liked this black one so much that I wanted a silver one, and I bought the silver one, and that's been the one I've mostly been using. Like I said, the fingerprints, uh, fingerprint reader sensor doesn't read 100% of the time, which is a little bit of an annoyance, but otherwise I really like the keyboard, other than a couple of other gripes I have. Um, it's a little bit small, but it's a physical keyboard in 2025 and we don't have many options for that these days uh, and the only option coming out I've pre-ordered which is the Unihertz Titan 2 and if uh, this video gets any traction maybe I'll do a review about the uh, Titan 2 once I get my hands on it I'm super excited about that device um, but this allows me to still get to Google Maps to chat to some apps I use for my Raspberry Pis to control those um, this launcher has a lot of features as well. Uh, it's called TUI, Terminal User Interface, and uh, it allows you to set aliases to launch apps by typing the name. And that's one thing that I find really convenient is that I, you know, when I pick up my mobile device before, um, you unlock it and you have a sea of apps staring at you and you've kind of forgotten what you originally went to go do on your device. This kind of eliminates that for me, at least. Um, I unlock my device and I have to type what it was I was thinking. So if I wanted to search for the Unihertz Titan 2, it's going to go ahead and pull that up for me and uh, allow me to quickly do a Google search without having to even open the Google app. A um, couple other cool things you can do, ping. So you can do ping C4 8.8.8.8, which is Google, and hit enter, and you're going to see Google responding to me and letting me know that all is well. Um, I set an alias for C to clear the console, so instead of having to type clear, I can just hit C and enter and it will clear whatever was on the screen. So pretty cool stuff you can still do with a BlackBerry in 2025. Um, like I mentioned, I use it to control my Raspberry Pis. I have a couple of set up in the house for networking items such as a Pi hole, a network wide ad blocker, and I can remote into the Raspberry Pi from these devices, um, SSH into it, have a full keyboard at my disposal, and yeah pretty cool stuff still in 2025 that you can get accomplished with these today especially if you're not trying to run you know the latest apps I will say like my banking app does not work on this I don't really recommend installing your banking app on this but uh, 
uh, you can still potentially check it through the browser. My uh, the Chrome browser still allows me to get to my bank, so if I really need to check in a pinch, um, I can log into my to my bank through the Chrome browser and still access uh, my accounts. What else did I have to talk about? Let's see, I'll pull up Obsidian. So you can see here the fingerprint sensor isn't always working, but it does sometimes. Um, I don't mind having to type in the pin, so you can still you can still type in the pin to to get into the device using the keys over here. Um, you can't swipe on the on the keyboard. I don't know if uh, I don't know if you saw that earlier, and it's kind of hard for me to. Uh, this was an article I was reading about the Titan Two. It's kind of hard for me to show um, with the lighting and all that right now, but. Uh, you can use the keyboard as a capacitive uh, touchpad, so you can scroll. And it's kind of nice, you don't have to put your fingers on the screen uh, to to do, uh, you know, scrolling through a website or reading an article. Um, I guess I, you know, say I uh, want to use this as a device to get away, and I'm still using it to kind of read articles in some capacity. I, I, I want a way for me to still be able to look at what I want to look at when I want to look at it without apps trying to get my attention, apps trying to pull me in and get me to waste 30 minutes scrolling through. Um, this feels more like a little computer. Um, this feels more like something that allows me to connect where I want to connect. Uh, you can see I got a notification there um, from Discord from someone fire reacting to something I posted about uh, Game GameCube modding. Um, I originally, originally made this channel, or the intention of this channel was to talk about Game Boy and GameCube and uh, retro tech mods and stuff like that, but uh, I feel like BlackBerry's kind of having, or it's back in the conversation at least these days, and I've been using these devices for some time um, as a way to disconnect, as a way for communication exclusively. Uh, as a way to look at what I want to look at when I want to look at it without feeling like I need to be connected all the time. Um, I do have Discord on here, right? But I do use Discord to communicate with some of my friends and wanted a way to still stay in touch. And Discord does run a little bit slow on this device, uh, but it's enough to quickly type a message if I wanted to get something out there to my to my buddies. And, um, yeah. couple other cool things you can do. Um, I don't think I talked about ping, or I did, but you and alias, but you could set a ping alias. So I've got a couple for like printer, and it'll ping my printer uh, a couple times to make sure that device is online. I have problems with my printer, and I haven't figured out why, but that's a nice troubleshooting step just real quick to ping up my, pick up my phone, type printer, and uh, be able to uh, check to see if it's online. Same with my pie hole, so I can type pie hole, and it'll ping my pie hole. Uh, and let me know whether or not that thing's functioning properly. Um, I don't have a lot on it, right? I'm I'm not gonna lie. I, I you can type. I set an alias for apps dash ls, which will display all the apps that I have installed. And you can see it looks like quite a bit. I've tried to take some of them out. I use this as an MP3 player. I use this as a file manager. Uh, for some of my uh, my my NAS and for uh, accessing my desktop, I use it as a way to connect to my Raspberry Pis. I use it as a way to stay in touch, but still not have Instagram or Facebook or Twitter uh, kind of pulling for my attention. And I I've enjoyed it. Um, you know, actually, I'm going to go ahead real quick and uninstall watch because I couldn't get my Google Pixel watch to work with this. So this is still connected to my main phone. Um, still connected to my main phone and it doesn't work when I leave the house, which is kind of nice, right? Like when I leave the house, I, I have to, I bring this with me. This These two devices aren't paired, so I can still check the time real quick. Still have a smart watch, 
but it's not vibrating when I don't want it to vibrate because I've I don't want to potentially be bothered by something when I'm grocery shopping, right? Um, I don't need 24/7 connectivity when I'm at the grocery store or when I'm at the gas station. I just want to be able to potentially know if my wife needs something while I'm out. Uh, I want to know if uh, you know potentially what the weather is uh, going to be t tomorrow, and so I can still get to that here. Um, but I don't have uh, you know a million different items pulling for my attention. I've said that a couple times, but it's really been the, the goal of this device is to have something that allows me to step away from, from the house without feeling like uh, my wife can't contact me because, you know, if, if you leave the house with no phone, then you're out of communication altogether. And, you know, I, I had this active for a little while in, in 2024, and um, I had it active for about three months, and I really liked the experience. I liked being able to take this with me and not have every app installed. Um, but at the time, three months passed with the Mint subscription. It didn't make a lot of sense for me to resubscribe financially. Um, so I don't know if it will make a lot of sense for everyone to have two devices in 2025. Um, but it is nice to, like tomorrow I'm leaving the house for a couple hours to, to go celebrate my brother's birthday. And I'm going to take this. Um, it'll be a device that I can still look things up on or quickly search for something or, you know, monitor what's happening on my other phone with push bullet. But I won't feel the need to constantly pull it out and check it or respond to every notification or, uh, you know, it'll allow me to be a little bit more present while I'm out and still have a device in my pocket. Uh, because I, it, I, I, I don't know if I'm at a point where I can just fully step away from a, having a mobile device when I want to leave the house and, and not be distracted. Um, cause I, I do rely on it for a lot and it's kind of become a part of all of our lives. It's hard to step away from. And I applaud people who are going the dumb phone route. But for me, I think this mixture of a semi-smart device, dumbed down phone, is probably the best approach for me. But I would understand if, you know, someone thought, uh, what are you doing here, right? Like, why are you, why are you carrying two phones? Why are you using a BlackBerry still? I, I don't know if I have an answer for that, to be honest, but... I feel like this works for me, so I wanted to talk about it and share it for, for others who are out there or who may be, be, may be curious. I don't know that I say go out and purchase one of these today. Um, there are a lot of apps that have some compatibility issues. Like I mentioned, uh, it's only running Android 8.1.0, uh, so pretty outdate, actually very outdate, uh, out of date. And... Um, yeah, so there are some security risks to running around with a device like this. It is a BlackBerry. No one's rooted it. It it does seem fairly secure from that perspective, is that it, no one still has figured out how to root this today. Um, and, yeah, there's, there's a couple cool features like this convenience key on the side, which allows you to program it to whatever, and I programmed it to bring down the notification shade. Um... So it's one less alt reach all the way up to the top of the device to drag that down. Um, I also installed System UI Tuner to get rid of the top navig like the top notification bar, so less distraction when I open up the device. Even if I do have notifications, I also have them set to not display on my home screen, so you can't see what's happening there. Um, I use this, as, like I mentioned, as a music player, so I've got my music player installed. Um, I have a 128 gig SD card in here and it holds quite a bit of music. Um, you know, so it is a pretty decent device. I mean, it's fairly snappy. It does what it needs to do and it does it well. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of complaints about it. The camera is okay. Um, I will try and put some photos up that I've taken with this. Let's see if I can find some good ones. Uh, it doesn't do super well in low light, but that is what it is, especially for a device that's this old. I don't even actually know off the top of my head when this was released, and I was about to look it up, but you'll see me typing. Actually, let's search it on here. Black search, Blackberry key to 
release date. 2018, July 13th, 2018. So, you know, it's a pretty old device. Um, I still really like it. Um, the keyboard is really nice to type on, especially if you've been on a glass slab for a while. Um, I missed it. I, I can't say that enough. Like, having a physical keyboard again in 2025 feels good. Um, I don't know how else to say it. Like, it's just a different experience, and it's nice to go back to. It's it's a different way to input into your phone, and uh, there are shortcuts. Like, you know, you can copy-paste. You can do Control-A to select all. You can use Control-C to copy you can use control V to, to paste, although this is not probably not going to work because I just copied a whole website and tried to paste it into a terminal. But you get what I'm saying here. Uh, there are some neat little tricks that ha are up the sleeve, like switching applications just by clicking uh, by just clicking a letter, right? I can go to my Explorer. I can go to my Recents. I can go to my Nova Launcher. If I hold down this, I can make this into like a regular phone again. Um, it's not like it's completely useless in 2025. And that's what I think is, I mean, it's, it's nice to be able to kind of repurpose and reuse and find uses for old technology like this. And, you know, while I don't know that I'd recommend it for everyone, I think it will work for some people if they need a way to disconnect, if they want a way to still communicate, if they want a different experience when they're communicating, uh, I think that this might be a good solution for you. Uh, it's been working for me. I've really been enjoying it. I wanted to share my experience. I hope this video you, was enjoyable for you. If not, please leave a comment and let me know. I probably am going to do very little editing to this, um, and this is just kind of a raw brain dump of my thoughts. I'm happy to do a follow-up if anyone's interested um, or have any questions. I'll be happy to answer them. But I, I just wanted to kind of share this experience of using a uh, BlackBerry in 2025, why I'm using it, how I'm using it, and how I've kind of got it configured. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching this video. If uh, you enjoyed it, let me know. If you hated it, also let me know. Uh, if you want me to do another video or follow up, or if you're excited about the Titan 2, let me know. Um, I'm pumped about the Titan 2. So hopefully it's a good keyboard typing experience. Hopefully Android 15 will allow for some more app compatibility like my banking app and still allow me to kind of use this launcher to focus and not be distracted by 200 million apps. Um, so yeah, again, thanks for watching this video. If you have questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll be happy to answer. Thanks. Bye.